The newest class of agents that we have got are known as incretins, and there are two groups of uh, medicines within the incretin group: the gliptins, which are DPP4 inhibitors, and the GLP1 injectables, um, which are loraglutide and exenatide. Just to give a feel for what the incretin system is all about. Um, uh, an elegant study published by a chap called Michael Nauck in the mid-80s looked at insulin secretion according to the delivery of glucose. And what he did was took a group of, I think, just six or eight people into a laboratory and he gave them an oral glucose challenge. So he gave them glucose, which they took by mouth, and then he measured blood glucose levels over the next three hours. He then brought them back into his laboratory on a separate occasion and by using intravenous glucose administration he was able to mimic the blood glucose excursion that was seen with the oral challenge. So essentially you had two groups of people who had got the same change in blood glucose on two separate occasions. One by giving them oral glucose on the second occasion by giving intravenous. But what he noted was that the insulin secretory response was very different on the two occasions. So there was a 70% increase in the amount of insulin secreted in those who received their glucose via the gut compared with those who received intravenous glucose. And what he gleaned from that was that there was something about having food or carbohydrate in the stomach that leads to an enhancement of insulin secretion. Now over time it has been recognised that this is largely due to the action of something called GLP-1. This is a peptide known as glucagon-like one uh, peptide and that GLP-1 is released in response to uh, food ingestion. And GLP-1 has got receptors on beta cells which are cells in the pancreas that produce insulin and GLP-1 will enhance the insulin secretory response to food. Now, GLP-1 as a peptide cannot be used for treatment of type 2 diabetes because it is almost instantaneously destroyed by a ubiquitously distributed enzyme known as DPP-4 or dipeptidyl peptase 4. So there are therapeutic mechanisms that have been adopted to get around this enzymatic destruction and use the, <coughs> pardon me, the incretin system as a therapeutic tool. Now the DPP-4 inhibitors stop the body destroying endogenously produced GLP-1 and so enhance the body's normal GLP-1 response. And these are the oral agents that are typically given once daily, certainly for cytogliptin, uh, saxagliptin and linagliptin, and they will have an impact on insulin secretion that brings down HbA1c, but have very little impact on weight. Now, uh, having little impact on weight is actually a good thing when you compare them with sulfonylureas mm. and pioglitazone, both of which can promote weight increases. The other mechanism for getting around the uh, DPP4 destruction is to use agents that are agonists of the GLP-1 receptor. So they give a GLP-1-like response, but are slightly different to the GLP-1 molecule. And here we have exenatide, which is a much larger molecule than GLP-1, which originally identified from the saliva of a lizard known as a Gila monster. And this can be injected on a twice daily basis and is resistant to the DPP-4 digestion. And so it has a longer effect than GLP-1 as an injection. Liraglutide is GLP-1 which has been modified by the addition of fatty acids to the molecule. And this is a similar technique that's been used to make insulins into longer acting insulins. And the liraglutide molecule also is resistant to digestion uh, by DPP-4. And in this case has got a longer mode of action and can be given once daily. Now these are giving you a much bigger hit of GLP-1 effect. So rather than it being a uh, physiological GLP-1 effect that you would see with the, the gliptins, the drugs that reduce enzymatic destruction of GLP-1 that's normally produced, these are giving a pharmacological effect, so a much higher level of GLP-1. And this probably accounts for the fact that they have more impact on HbA1c and a beneficial impact on weight, causing a weight reduction. But conversely, it's also the reason that they have side effects, typically nausea that's seen at the initiation of therapies. We now have a more 
durable GLP-1 um, uh, that was launched in summer 2011, which is currently going through the NICE STA uh, appraisal uh, approval, and that's a once weekly version of Exenatide, and this is known as Bigurion. And the way that this is packaged, it's essentially the same Exenatide molecule, but it's packaged in a formulation of microspheres, and the microspheres are made with a uh, polymer which is ultimately. Uh, digested and uh, reduced by uh, the body down to carbon dioxide and water. But this process, which is akin to um, uh, uh, dissolvable sutures, same sort of mechanism, this process takes place over a month and so gives you an impact, a therapeutic impact of exenatide that lasts for a week. So now we have a once weekly injection using exenatide and in the future there are some data produced at the European Diabetes Meeting in Lisbon in September looking at preparations of exenatide that might last for two to three months or even nine months by technologies that allow for slow release um, into the system.